really what I'm looking at, these simple subjects that um, can be so interesting when the light is right. And you could also make up light. So that is going to be a subject, something I've not painted before, it's so simple. Well, hi everyone. Welcome back to yet another talk tutorial. And um, what I do during these talk tutorials, I actually talk you through the painting process of each painting. And then the next Friday, the coming Friday, I will actually demonstrate the com complete painting. Now, this one is of Burnham Overy Staves when I was up on the North Norfolk coast just a few weeks ago and um, it's the old boat shed um, and we've got the 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 estuary area um, and uh, uh, it's a lovely little scene it's a simple subject but what I tried to do is to create interest in the sky the uh, um, the, the foreground uh, the middle distance a couple of figures um, so let me just talk you through the basic principle that I used and one or two colour mixes um, as we um, go through the talktorial. Well I've honed in uh, closer as I normally do and as I said it's a lovely simple little subject but it's it's a simple subject made interesting and that is the key to um, painting um, really uh, any subject really um, the simpler they are the better in many ways but you obviously need to know how to add interest well the first thing I wanted to do was ha add interest to the sky so I didn't want a, an overall wet into wet approach like I did on my other paintings um, um, there on the North Norfolk coast, I wanted uh, interest. So I laid in the blue, that is ultramarine, um, and um, a little bit lighter as I came down into the, uh, um, the distance area of the sky. Um, I left one or two hard edges, then I went back in, and I obviously uh, quite deep in colour at the top there, and I wetted it and went a little bit lighter as I came down. Then I added a little raw sienna, and I blended that in just as it's beginning to dry. So you get this lovely sort of um, run back effect that a lot of people uh, and newcomers to painting would feel that it, it, well, it didn't look right when you first do it. But what you've got to do is to allow that to dry and then push on. Because if you think you're going to produce a perfect sky, then everything else is going to be perfect. You've got to show every brick in the wall. You've got to show every blade of grass. So the looser you approach your skies, the looser and more suggestive and, and uh, impressionist you can be with the rest of your painting. Um, not always the case, but that was the theory behind this painting. Once I'd produced that, I then put this lovely beach area in, and I, I used plenty of yellow for that. Um, actually, it's raw sienna, but it came up a really clean raw sienna. Um, then I painted in the uh, bricks on the, on the gable end and the roof. Um, also put in, obviously, the greenery, and there again you can see the, the shadow was laid in later but the, but the light areas are my first washers and as you can see I've painted across and my old traditional way of adding uh, browns uh, even a touch of red touch of blue there um, to the green that all helps to give interest the green I actually use cadmium yellow and I think I use the wind uh, the um, ultramarine blue um, and I tried to pick up the same green there. Forget about the shadows at this stage. Um, obviously the boat was white, so I painted around that. And the water, I've used a similar colour to the lower part of the sky. So that's ultramarine blue, 
may have had just a merest touch of raw sienna in there just to give it a slightly greeny blue color um, then i'll put in the windows um, it's very suggestive that's a door very suggestive you know um, i did actually put in panes of glass there but very loosely um, these you can just see where the windows are there's also a black um, um, it, it's sort of like a, um, a a coating they put in the lower part of these buildings on the coast uh, as a as a water protection really because uh, during the winter months this can flood quite severely and um, once that completely dried I then put in the um, distant areas in just all they are is suggestion of boats and masts that they that's the only real boat that i had to actually draw i put in uh, cadmium yellow i put in uh, um, i think it was indian red might have been alizarin uh, and a blue cobalt blue um, and then i used a brown burnt sienna for the mar impressions of mars uh, a little bit of blue there you can see and um, then I went very dark with the figures I think I put those in before I put the shadow in I'm sure I did so the figures are very dark because they're in the shadowed area had I put them there they would have needed to be light against the dark area um, but these are dark against the light area in the distance and um, a nice thing to do if you're learning uh, uh, to paint uh, to put in you know if you're new to putting in figures into your subjects then please um, put them in the shadows and do silhouettes of them to start um, uh, they're so much easier to get to come off um, and in the middle to distance um, once you start entering them in the foreground you have to be you know um, fairly proficient at, uh, at drawing them um, and uh, and when you put figures in just be aware of the size of the building there's nothing worse than a large figure and that makes the building look small um, so keep your figures smaller because they can always be small people or even children um, but of course if they're big then they're, they're giants which um, um, we rarely see here on the North Norfolk coast then I'll use burnt umber for the um, uh, portal or the little key uh, side there and um, basically it was then the shadows all we did all i did uh, i used ultramarine and i think i used um olizum crimson and there's just a little bit down there for the side of the roof i could just about see down the down the uh, face of the um, building and then swept it across but i stopped there because that then shows that it's higher the shadow goes behind that okay so I could have brought it up and over that, which may have helped the feeling of light there. Uh, but I elected just to leave it, uh, finish it there. And then the wall was then, then in shadow. And obviously with the sun coming from the right, the top and the right hand sides of the windows are slightly set back in. Well, they are now anyway, whether they really are or not, I'm not sure. Uh, and the door across the top down the right. Then I put in a little bit of shadow work there, leaving still some touches of the green paint, uh, the green hedging, and pulled that across so that uh, this shadow is the shadow from that um, hedging. And then a weaker shadow in the foreground, but stronger as I came to the left. Um, and notice I put blue in there, uh, as I say, the, a little bit of red. Um, and darker before I get to the lighter beach because this this is actually a cloud shadow it's not a shadow from a tree it's a cloud shadow in other words there's clouds in the sky and um, they're creating these subtle uh, soft edge shadows so you know I put the shadow in and then use a damp brush just to to blend it got to be very careful you don't drop too much water in when you do that uh, but basically um that is all there is to it well there you have it i hope you've enjoyed that little quick look at the way um, i painted this but as i say this coming friday uh 6 p.m uk time i will be demonstrating uh, exactly the painting process 
So I shall be doing from first washes through to laying on colours um, and the finishing touches, all the little uh, touches that I put in. And um, so that's this coming Friday from 6 p.m. You can watch it any time after that, but I do have a premiere at 6 p.m. where I can actually answer any questions uh, by um, um, typing. Um, and uh, so if you are available for that, if not, then tune in at any time after that. And um, I hope you enjoy watching. Thank you all very much. And please subscribe if you like my videos. And take care and we'll see you all again very, very soon.